come on, come on. You get it twice, that's it. Oh. Oh. Hit it a couple of times, eh? What have we got? Catfish? A little catfish. Now, anyone can catch catfish. I can bet. Ooh, look at the size of that one. <laughs> There was a big, big catfish under that. Anyway, as I was saying, anyone can catch catfish on conventional gear like this. But I'm going to challenge myself to catch one on a snake lolly. So um, I'll show you them in a sec. I'll just let this guy go. There we go. Looks out. Little, little catfish. And off you go. Don't get eaten by the big catfish. So yeah, I just, um, that was actually the second cast with that lure. And that's, that's the conventional way, that, soft plastics, whatever. And I'll show you what I'm going to try and catch them on. I've thought about this for a long time, but I've never actually done it. Where is it? A packet of snakes. So I'm going to whack on a, a couple of different hooks. So I've got a nice bunch of colours to choose from. Make sure when you buy a packet of snakes that you have a, a nice selection of colours. So I've got a little snake out. And I'm just going to use a, a weedless worm hook. Um, rigged how we use soft plastic, or how, how I use soft plastics in weed. Um, I believe it's the same as the, the Texas rig in the States. So I just put a knot in there. And this is a loop, of the, the knot I'm going to put in here tie that hook on is the um, perfection loop or lefties loop. So you put a granny knot in it first, put it in there, and go around a couple of times. I'll, um, I'll actually do a video with the, the knots that I use the most, probably four or five knots, and that covers most of my fishing. So just wet it and pull it tight. There we go. Now with the reason for that loop is so that the soft plastic or whatever can, can flip around and has a lot of action. I'm also going to put a, a split shot in front just to get it down a little bit. Get some pliers for that. There we go, that's nice and solid. And then, this is a little bit long and it's got a big fat end on it. I'm going to eat it. Mm -mm. So now, the way to rig this is just, just the way you rig any soft plastic. You want the hook to sit like that. So what we're going to do, put the hook in here. Come down and out. There we go. Mm, that's tasty. And I'm using this colour because um, it's a sort of a darkish natural colour, which is kind of what I and um, got the other fish on. So the hook needs to go through there. Put the hook through there. There we go. And like so. And then we can just tuck that in there a little bit, and that's ready to go. So we'll see if we can catch a fish. Oh, that sinks actually quite fast. I'm actually quite confident that we'll catch a fish on this. So I'll pick a nice big tree to start with and just, yeah, just give it a go. That's all you can do. Oh! Oh, I just got caught up in the tree, I flicked it behind me, and straight away, a fish just nailed it. That's not exactly how that was supposed to go. Oh, yeah, catfish. Wow. Okay, let's try that again. I'll get this guy in first. <laughs> oh, that worked ten times better than I thought it would. I'll just get this guy off, so... My cast was actually supposed to be in the middle here and I went a little bit sideways and got caught up high. And to get it off, I just yanked it out and it landed in the water behind me here. Let's get this guy off. Um, and I don't think it sank very far at all. I think it sank like, here we go, let's have a look at him. And there we go. And he ate it before I could even move it. So that was, that was cool. I, I don't know if I'm going to call that a success. I, I'd, I'd want to get the lure in there first and, and get one.
I just spotted a cormorant's nest with a chick in it, which means there should be fish sitting underneath it. What happens is, that's a bit short, the, um, the adult feeds the chick and then the poo just goes straight in the water. So there should be fish lined up, right underneath it, ready to, to eat whatever falls out of the nest. And that's actually wacky rigged, so we'll just do that. That lure's changed, changed position. Right under the nest, there we go. Oh, yep! <laughs> oh, I love it when my predictions are right. Still there, but he's around a tree. You can feel him. Nice. Oh, okay, let's go and get him. Oh, he's going. Come on out. There he is, he's out. Nice, nice catfish. And right under that nest, we'll, um, we'll have a look in that nest in a second. Yeah, he's probably not a bad size to eat. I might um, have him for lunch. I'll cook him up in a second. Well, we'll fish for a bit longer, but then we'll, then we'll cook him up. So I've actually cut the catfish's throat and just tied him on, on here like this. So he'll, he'll bleed to death. And um, yeah, I'll eat him later. But let's have a look at his nest. I saw a little head sticking out just before. Oh, without falling in the water. There he is. Hello, little fella. Huh? Hey, little fella. He's cute. He's cute. Alright, we'll let him be now. See ya. Bye. So that's um, two fish caught on the, the snakes. I'm going to try and catch a few more, try different colours, um, eat a couple, <laughs> I was just, uh, yeah, I'm amazed at how well sometimes, like, if, if you know how things work, like seeing that nest there, I've had it a few times where I know the fish are sitting right under that nest, and if you find a nest that's got an active, like a, an active parent, a chick in there, even some eggs, you'll almost always find fish under them, so, if you want to see more snake fishing, I've, I've actually, I'm actually thinking I might start using these instead of soft plastics. But if you want to see more lolly snake fishing or other weird types of fishing, comment. And so I reply to all comments. But now I'm gonna. Whoop, there's a catfish there. <laughs> Just freaked me out. <laughs> I'm gonna go catch a few more on these. Try not to eat too many because they're not that good for you. But they're tasty. And I just heard mum go back to the nest. So, no harm done looking at the little baby. And mum's all happy and baby's all happy. Oh, check out that lungfish. That is a big lungfish. That's a metre ten. Wow, that's cool. So the rod and reel I'm using is the Samaki Zing, 10 to 20 pounds, 6 foot spin. Um, the Finor 3000 Rampage, uh, and 30 pound braid, and I've got 30 pound leader. Now the reason I chose this over the other outfit, the other Zing, smaller Zing, is because there's so much timber in here. And I've been blown away on that small Zing many times. Uh, and, and the catfish pull really hard, catfish are really underrated. So using this in here is um, it's almost a muff. Making a bit of a mess of this one, but we'll fish it anyway. There we go. Nice. Oh, hit straight away. Come on, eat it. Oh, he's got it. Yep, got him. <laughs> a little tap and then he, oh, he he swam off with I didn't realize I had him oh, that's only probably the second or third cast with the green one. Oh, big one just came out look I'm really enjoying these soft plastics because they're actually um, they're very environmentally friendly if I lose it there's no plastic floating around if I get hungry I can eat them 
if a fish eats them, they, they just eat them. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to give fish um, diabetes. So I'm fishing in the Burnett River. I'll probably put a little map or something up on the side there just to show you roughly where it is. This river is just loaded full of catfish. Um, I just discovered today there's heaps of tilapia. There's, there's big lungfish, which you're not allowed to keep or catch. Um, and I'm sure there's a whole bunch of other species, but um, yeah. Very nice system, and if you want to catch a catfish, this is a very easy place to do it. So we've got our catfish. I've got a potato all sliced up. We've got a lemon this time, some salt and some oil, and a fire burnt down to coals. So this is going to be fish and chips on a campfire. Sit nice and hot, and throw the chippies in. And we want to keep those moving, at least until they get a little bit brown. Keep it over the fire and just keep them moving, a bit like a, a shallow stir fry. So I've had quite a few people ask me to use some lemon. They um, obviously like lemon, so I'm going to cook with a bit of lemon. It should go nicely with fish and chips as well. And uh, yeah, the, the idea for fish and chips came from a subscriber. Uh, he suggested I just chuck it all in a pot, but I've decided to make, make fish and chips rather than um, a big, big cook-up type thing. So if you've watched this far, you get to um, hear a couple of secrets. The um, potatoes, I've put a bit of salt on, um, let them sit for a while, get the moisture out, dry them, put a bit more salt on, get the moisture out and dry them again. So that's probably one of the reasons they're not sticking and they'll be a bit tastier that way as well. And if you keep watching the video, you'll see two confirmations of my theories. I won't give them away just yet. You can probably hear that, those chips are pretty much done. They're um, a bit crunchy. So we're just going to push the chips to one side, the high side. Add a bit more oil. And that way the fish will have a nice bath of olive oil. Delicious. There we go. Ooh, the smell coming off that is just delicious. Oh, just like fish and chips. Lovely. There we go. That's our campfire fish and chips. Gonna put a bit of salt on there. Let's see, there we go. A bit of salt on the on the chippies. A bit of salt on the fish. Nice squeeze of a lemon on the fish. Mm. Oh yeah. This is gonna be tasty. So the sun's just going down. I fished all day. Oh, oh, oh crunchy chips on the campfire. Can't beat it. Oh, mmm, salty. That olive oil, mmm, let's try a bit of fish. Mmm, nice, nice. Mm. I'm loving these chips though. Mmm. So, make suggestions what species I should go after, how I should cook them, where I should go. just spotted another nest and this one looks like it has two chicks in it. They've got a, a bit more fur on them, not not heaps more but a little bit more than they are. Let's try that theory again. Drop my lure right underneath them. Perfect. Oh, yep, that's a touch. Come on. Come on, got it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's not a bad one either. So that theory is now two for two. <sighs> yeah, it's not a bad one. Not as big as I've seen them in here. And if you want me to come back here and film more catfish action, put that in the comments as well. And uh, 
I think that's it for me. I'm going to keep driving. I've got a long way to get home. And, uh, yeah. So, yeah, comment, like, if you haven't subscribed. I do this all the time. I do a video a week. So, yeah, join the club.